question 1.1 of multiple choice, which reads, the rate of change of momentum of an object is equal to the, and the rate of change of momentum, we know deals with the impulse formula, where it can be either written as F net times the change in time is equal to the change in momentum, or it can be written as F net is equal to delta P over delta T. Now, this question here asks for the rate of change of momentum, which refers to delta P over delta T. The rate of anything is always divided by the amount of time, in which case we are dealing with the second formula here, which says that the rate of change of momentum of an object is equal to the net force, which makes option B the correct answer to 1.1. So question 1.2 in multiple choice, which reads, the gravitational acceleration on the surface of planet X with mass M and radius R is G. The gravitational acceleration on the surface of planet Y with mass 2M and radius 1 half R is, and then we are given four options. The gravitational acceleration as a result of a planet's mass and radius, we remember, is given by the formula G is equal to the universal gravitation constant multiplied by the mass of that planet divided by the radius of that planet squared, where that this can be the formula for the original planet, where we are now trying to find what the gravitational acceleration on the new planet is. And so the universal gravitation constant remains the same, but the mass now becomes double the original mass and the radius of that planet becomes one half of the original planet squared. Both of those would result in the gravitational acceleration increasing and we can show that by saying we can take the factor of two out to the front of this equation and one half r squared becomes one over four r squared, which can then become or be simplified to two times four times g m over r squared, or just eight g m over r squared, where we can then see that this gravitational acceleration is exactly the same as our original gravitational acceleration. And therefore, we can say that the new gravitation is equal to eight times the original gravitational acceleration, which makes the correct answer here, option D. This is question 1.3 of multiple choice, which reads, the graph below shows how one of the physical quantities associated with an object in free fall changes with time t. The label on the y-axis is omitted. Which one of the following physical quantities can be the label on the y-axis? The key thing to notice in this question is that we are told that this object is in free fall. We know that when it is in free fall, that there is only one force acting on it, and that is the force of gravity. Since there is only one force acting on it, the acceleration or gravitational acceleration of this object is constant. So the force of gravity acting on this object and the gravitational acceleration are constant. And in our options, the weight force is the only option that we have. So the correct answer is C. Question 1.4 reads, a ball of mass M falling vertically downwards hits the floor at a speed V and bounces vertically upwards at a speed 0.75 V. Which of the following combinations regarding the change in momentum of the ball during the collision is correct? And what's important for us to realize is firstly that the momentum has changed direction. So the initial momentum of this object which is a result of its speed, is 1v, and that is downward. The initial momentum is 1v, and then the final momentum is 0.5v, but that is then upward. So what we need to realize is that the change in momentum is an upward direction because the object was initially heading downward and then changed direction upward, and it is therefore the combination of both of these, which means that the change in momentum is 1.75 times V. And then we can clearly see by drawing this 
uh, vector diagram here, we can see that that is an upward change, which means that the correct answer is option C, where the magnitude of the change is 1.75 V and the direction of the change is upwards. Question 1.5, which reads, the base SI unit of the physical quantity work is, and so we start with our formula for work, where work is the product of force and displacement. And that means that the units for work, we show units by writing something in square brackets. The units for work are equal to the units for force, which is newtons, multiplied by the units for displacement, which is meters. But what we can see here is that they do not want units, or they do not want newtons. So what we need to do is we need to find out what the units are for force, what a newton actually is. And we do that by saying that one newton is actually equal to the unit for mass, which is the kilogram, multiplied by the unit for acceleration, which is the meter per square second. And so what we can see then is that the unit for work is equal to the product of kilograms, meters per square second, multiplied by meters once again, and therefore kilogram meters squared per second squared. And so our correct answer is option C. Question 1.6 of multiple choice, which reads, the siren of a police car moving in front of a truck emits a sound of frequency F. Both vehicles are traveling at the same constant velocity. The frequency of the sound heard by the driver of the truck is. And what's important here is that both vehicles are traveling at the same constant velocity. What that means is that there is no relative motion between them, which we know is the only time when the Doppler effect applies. So since there is no relative motion between them, the truck driver will hear exactly the same frequency that is being emitted. And therefore, the correct answer to 1.6 is A. Question 1.7 in multiple choice, which reads, two identical metal spheres, P and R, on insulated stands carry different charges. The spheres are brought into contact and then separated again. If the charge on sphere R after separation is Q, the charge on sphere P after separation is. And we know from the formula for charges that are brought into contact and then separated that the charge is combined and then shared, which means both objects would end up with the same charge. So if the charge on sphere R is Q, then the charge on sphere P will be Q as well. So the correct answer there is A. Question 1.8, which reads, an AC generator generates a current with a frequency of 50 hertz. The number of times that the maximum or peak current is produced in one second is, and what this requires is that we know the definition or have an understanding for what a frequency is, where we know that a frequency is the number of complete waves that are produced in one second. So when we see a frequency of 50 hertz, what that tells us is that there are 50 complete waves produced per second. And as we can see that in one wave, the maximum or the peak is achieved twice per wave, which means that in a frequency of 50 hertz, there are twice as many peaks achieved, which means that the correct answer here is option D, two times 50, 100 peak. Starts with question 1.9 in multiple choice, which reads, in the circuit below, the battery has an internal resistance R and an EMF E. A variable resistor R is connected in the circuit and the ammeter and voltmeter register readings. The resistance of the variable resistor is now increased. Which one of the following combinations is the correct representation of the change in the readings on the ammeter and the voltmeter as the resistance of R is increased? And so what we need to see here is we need to see that when the resistance increases in the external circuit, that means that the current in the external circuit or the current in the entire circuit is then going to decrease. Since the current decreases, that means that our number of lost volts, V lost, which is the product of current and the internal resistance, 
And since current decreases, the number of lost volts is going to decrease. And the amount of voltage available to the external circuit known as the load voltage, which is the EMF of the battery minus the number of lost volts. And since our EMF remains unchanged, and since the number of lost volts has decreased, that means that our load voltage, the number of volts available in the external circuit is going to increase. And so what we find is that the voltmeter reading, our load voltage over here is going to increase, our current is going to decrease. And so the correct answer is option A, without going through that much explanation, we can also say when the current decreases, the amount of energy lost in the internal circuit to internal resistance decreases. Therefore, there's more energy available externally and therefore our voltmeter reading would increase. Question 1.10 of multiple choice, which reads, the sodium cathode of a photocell is irradiated with ultraviolet light as shown in the diagram below. The ammeter registers a current. Which one of the following changes will increase the ammeter reading? So since we have already been told that the ammeter is registering a current, what that means is that the UV light has an energy that exceeds the work function, which means that there are photoelectrons being ejected, and so we have a current flowing. Once that's the case, we know that the only way that we can increase the number of electrons that move across, because the number of electrons is the number of charge carriers, so more electrons moving across would increase the ammeter reading. The only way that that can happen is if we increase the number of photons of light. It has nothing to do with the energy of the light because there's already enough energy to eject an electron. What we would need to do is increase the number of photons and the number of photons is the intensity of the light. So the only way for us to increase the current is to increase the number of electrons and we do that by increasing the number of photons aka the intensity of that light.